Well, now, you may well have seen David Putnam's keynote address on his vision for the future and a whole range of topics he told delegates here to the conference a little earlier. I'm delighted to say he joins us in our studios here. Good afternoon to Good you afternoon. again. Um, I was a little concerned. You seem quite worried about a lot of things, <laughs> yes. um, David. But nevertheless, at the end, you said you remain nevertheless optimistic. So let's tick off this list. You're particularly concerned, I think, about the media as a whole telling truth to the world? Yes, partly because I, as I lighted that with the issues relating to climate change. Yes. And that in fact, unless the media take an unambiguous lead in taking us through what we are looking at, and which, you know, in every, every likelihood is very, very serious indeed. Unless they do that, they're allowing us, we're back to the bullfrogs problem. They're allowing us to convince ourselves that tomorrow, paying tomorrow's mortgage is more important, this is more important, that's more important. And so we will constantly rearrange order of priorities and push the, the really existential problem we have down too low to, to address it. We still have a lot of loud siren voices who are climate change deniers or detractors. Now, I know you worked on behalf of the British government very closely at this. Yep. You've satisfied yourself that there is no equivocation here. We have a problem. I have no doubt at all there is no equivocation. And use the word, and I think it's interesting, use the word siren voices. I believe they are siren voices. I think in many, many cases they're captured voices, or in some cases they're people who in order to get attention or the attention they would like, find it easier to get that by being, as it were, the oppositional voices. And this is one of the problems with this so-called balance in the media. Uh, uh, to their credit, the BBC recently, have, I think, have, have, have re rethought this. But you could be a very, very fringe nutter and find yourself on the Today programme being given equal time to, sub to a scientist who spent the last 30, 40 years studying something simply mm. because the BBC believes that it has to offer balance. Well, wasn't it Twas Ever Thus? I mean, uh, voices at the end of the high street, preachers on the corner of a town. I mean... How much... Yes, interesting were point. Were they fact-checked? How much, how, much, how much media attention did the preacher on the corner of the town get? I mean, often he got rotten tomatoes thrown at him. Yes. He didn't tend to get a lot of media attention. Yeah. No, I think that we, there is an issue, and the issue is if you drift into an entertainment-led um, televisual medium, yeah. Yeah. it is entertainment to have someone who is oppositional, irrespective of, of how loony I'll, their views might be. You want a good talker. Yeah. You want somebody combustible. And I know there is a temptation, I suppose, to put up meaningless debate where there isn't really a debate at all but you, it's artificial I suppose. Yes. But interestingly the headline story for me as an old newsman is you're going to return to your <laughs> roots to tell a story. Now the risk you run in telling a story um, because I know what you really want to do which is to raise awareness of climate change is that an, a primarily an entertainment device like a film to yep. entertain me for a couple of hours becomes preachy. How do you avoid that or do you want to avoid that? Uh, no I def definitely want to avoid it. I don't think my films have ever been preachy, there's the truth. The Killing Fields is a very tough-minded film. The Mission, I showed you a brief clip of. I don't think these are preachy films. I think they're films. Two guys, as I left just now, said to me, the Mission was a film that changed their lives. Is that preachy? I, I don't know, but I certainly never intended to preach. What I tended to do was illuminate. Yeah. And do you have, do, let me be slightly cynical, do you have the funding for your film? Or do you I, think today is, is part of the way down there? Interesting enough, the script's a very, very good script. I have the funding subject to delivering the, one of the approved directors. So I'm back to who's, not so much who's in it, but who's making it. <laughs> so anyway, a little discussion around it doesn't help. No, not at all. It's it, enormously it helpful. Help Listen, who knows, someone, someone watching this may be saying, someone here. that's the film I want to see made. Right, good, OK. Well, thank you very much indeed for a brief conversation with you, and I hope you do enjoy your time in Amsterdam. Bless you. Thank you very much for having me.